This conference will now be recorded. Yes, good morning everyone, whether it's audible. Yes, sir. Yes, thank you. Um, see, today here, we are, uh, today here, we are to take the PD physical design demo. So in this demo class, we are going to understand what is physical design. Why, why it is, why it is. So what is the course content course content so duration of course <coughs> how much duration right and so fees and all the admin will discuss right this is the main thing what we are going to discuss today in this uh, demo session right okay first we'll discuss what is physical design and uh, why it is right that is what we have to understand what is physical design and why we want physical design see mainly what happens is we are here to fabricate this so here we have to design the ic everyone know what is ic right integrated circuit Everyone has seen the IC. So in your UG class also, you have used IC in your lab, Anala class lab. And get IC. People have used IC, integrated circuit. Even my mobile phone has IC. So IC fabrication, <coughs> IC design, two different work, I can tell. Right? IC design, the engineers are done. IC fabrication happens in foundry. So mainly they are chemical engineers. The engineers uh, mainly they work on chemicals, the fabrication unit. But we design engineers work on what? I see design mainly. Right? So there are two aspects: I see design and I see fabrication. See, there is a term called as foundry. What is foundry? What is foundry? So foundry is nothing but a place where IC is fabricated. Foundry is a place where IC is fabricated, integrated circuit. See, fabricating IC in the foundry is very challenging nowadays, especially. The reason is right. The IC size is in micrometer scale and transistor size in transistor size is in nanometer scale. The nanometer even we cannot see through our eyes. We can see only through complex microscope. So IC design, so the IC fabrication is very challenging. So to fabricate one IC, right? A company has to invest huge amount. See whether it is audible to everyone. Uh, yes, sir, we are able to.
Yes, now it is audible properly. Uh, yes, sir, we are able to hear you. Okay, fine. So foundry is a place, right, where IC gets fabricated. So fabrication of IC is very challenging to the foundry, and the investment is also very huge. To fabricate IC, right, the test chip, they have to, they have to invest in floors. But an IC comes into market, the cost of IC, a mobile phone IC, is not more than 2,000 rupees. Then how much IC they have to sell in the market to reach that huge crores of amount? Right? They have to sell a huge amount, huge ICs to meet this, right? Then, if they want to sell huge IC in the market, if they want to hit the market, right? Any IC vendor, if they want to hit the market, then his IC should never fail. His IC should never fail in terms of what IC should be excellent in terms of functionality speed and what in terms of functionality speed area power right you should be also having good power power See, for whom it is not audible, right? Please leave the meeting and join again. Leave the meeting and join again. Right? For others, it is audible. Hello, for others, whether it is audible? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. audible. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Audio. Okay, thank you. <clears throat> so now, so IC should be right excellent in terms of functionality, speed, area, and power. Then only we can hit the market, right? Then only the IC can hit the market. See, IC meeting the speed, functionality, area, power. It is not role of the fabrication unit. It's a role of designing unit. Designer has to take care of this. Designer has to take care about this parameter. It is not the person who is fabricating it. See, fabricating person is going to fabricate what you tell, how you tell, right? But if it's working properly, the speed of operation is good, area is good, power is good, then you have to take care. The engineer has to take care. Designer has to take care about the fabrication. I'm oh, sorry, designing, right? Take care about the, these parameters. Okay, now what the foundry can understand then? See, designer is going to design an IC by using EDA tool. So, EDA tool is used to design IC. So, we are engineers are the designers, right? We are going to design the IC by using EDA tool. Electronic design automation tools. So, EDA tool is used to design. AC, integrated circuit. EDA tool means electronic design automation tools. One of the examples are your Xilinx tool, right? DC compiler, ICC tool. All these are EDA tools. The tool which is helping to design an IC or electronic circuit is called as what? EDA tool. So these tools we use to design an IC. After designing an IC, what you will give to Foundry? The GDS so to find. design IC, right? Engineers are designing IC, but what we are giving to Foundry? The GDS to file which were created in during the design of IC. 
yes good right we should give gds2 file boundary can understand only gds2 file gds means graphical data stream data stream so this gds only the foundry can understand so what what the gds contains then the foundry can understand only gds what the gds contains all the macro units and the timing analysis it understands only the layout layout information its connections GDS has layout information and its connections. So that is called as GDS. So Foundry can understand GDS. So the IC designer has to design the IC, right? Meeting functionality, speed, area, and power. And he has to generate what? At last, he has to generate the layout. And that layout should be given to Foundry. So Foundry will generate, fabricate the IC based on the layout information. What is the layout we are giving? Right. What is layout then? So layout, this is a layout, right? This is a layout, layout of inverter. So everyone knows this. I think most of the colleges have this, right? So your inverter, CMOS inverter, if you take, CMOS inverter has what? PDD? PMOS? NMOS? ground this is v in this v out right? is your cmos inverter this is a layout of your cmos inverter layout. so this is your metal layer right what is this this is a metal layer blue color is metal layer this is nothing but what your vdd and what is this green color? Green color is diffusion, correct? So how do you fabricate your PMOS? How do you fabricate your PMOS? So here, entire CMOS is fabricated like this, right? You have first what? First you have P substrate, correct? First you have P substrate. So inside P substrate, what is fabricated? Your NMOS is? Fabricated. But to fabricate PMOS, what is required? N well is required. Right? You want N well to fabricate your PMOS. This is N well. So inside PMOS, you are going to fabricate inside P substrate, you are going to fabricate N MOS. N plus region. N plus region. Highly doped N plus region we are going to use. Right. N plus regions. What is the source? This part is what? Drain. And on top of the source and drain, what you have? Here you have silicon dioxide. You have silicon dioxide. On top of silicon dioxide, we have polysilicon. Correct? This polysilicon is going to act as what? Gate. This is going to act as source. This is going to act as what? Drain. This entire thing is called as what? The entire thing is called as your NMOS. Then what is your PMOS? This is PMOS, right? Your source. Drain. This is source drain. This highly doped P plus region. Highly, again, you have silicon dioxide. On top of that, you have what? Gate. Here you have gate. This is gate, this is source, this is trained. 
So the structure only is called as what? So what we see from the top side, the top view is called as layout. This layout. So here you have NVL, right? In NVL, what is formed? PMOS is formed. So here also you have NVL. This is your NVL. This is your NVL. So this green color, what is this green color? So your green color is this P plus region, P plus source and P plus drain. This is, this is P plus source. This is P plus source. This is P plus drain. So similarly, right, your, what is P subset? This, this entire white color is P subset. And this is your N plus source. This is N plus drain. So diffusion is crossed by what? It's crossed by polysilicon. This polysilicon is going to act like what? This gate. This on the top, if you see, you can see only polysilicon. In between source and drain, you're seeing what? Polysilicon. So that polysilicon is acting like a gate. For inverter, right? Gate and gate is shorted, correct? Here, gate and gate is shorted so here also gate and gate is shorted and it's given to what input and here drain and drain is shorted it's given to v out so here drain and drain is shorted given to what output so here the source of pmos is connecting to vdd here source of pmos is connecting to vdd metal source of nmos is connecting to vss here source of nmos is connecting to vss that is metal so this is called as layout this layout only the foundry can understand. By seeing this layout only, the foundry will fabricate the IC. So this layout information we have to pass to what? We have to pass to the yes, this this is in the this file is called as GDS. In GDS, this layout only is present. Not only one cell, right? You will be having plenty of cells. This is layout of one inverter, layout of NAND gate, layout of another cell. So all the layouts get connected through what? Metal layer. This output will connect to some other cell again. This output is going to connect what? Some other cell. So connection of layouts, that is what the foundry can understand. The foundry can understand GDS. The GDS has what? Layout information and its connections. So ultimately the role of PD, PD engineers is to generate the GDS and to send this to what? Send this to Foundry. That is the role of physical design engineers. Right? So now if we are generating GDS, from what we are generating GDS? So PD engineers gets what, what input? From what files we are converting the design to what? GDS. To understand that, so we should use ASIC design flow. ASIC design flow. So ASIC stands for application specific integrated circuit. So application specific means the IC is specific for particular application, mobile phone application. So I cannot use this IC again for any other application. So whatever IC we are designing, it's for particular application. But FPGA is not like that. FPGA is field programmable gate array that can be reprogrammed again and again. We can erase the content and we can reprogram it. We can change its functionality. But ASIC is Right. Once, I, once IC is fabricated, I cannot change its content. It's only for particular application. So in this ASIC, right? What are all the steps? First, we start with what? ASIC starts with first step: specification. So ASIC starts first step with what? Specification. So specification means 
so we have to get what is the requirement of ic right for what i have to build what i have to for what we have to design the ic whether i want to design the ic for mobile phone application then what are all the blocks i want inside ic whether i want gps module whether i want ethernet module whether i want uh, memory module bluetooth module what modules i want inside an ic so specification includes functional blocks of ic functional blocks what is the functional blocks required area what is the estimated area what is the power estimated power what is the speed estimated speed of operation like number of clocks number of clocks for each block functional blocks uses what clock so all those information is decided from the specification team uh, generally architecture team is involved architecture team and that is involved and they are going to generate what are the blocks required for ic what blocks how much area how much power what is speed of operation speed of operation means what clock we are giving so everything is estimated so after specification what's the next step design each and every functional block we have to implement it functional block we should start implementing so how do we implement them rtl design yes good right we go for rtl coding right? or rtl design rtl design see rtl design we use as we use vhdl or we use verilog we use vhdl or verilog to write the program to start the design why we are using verilog or vhdl Why we have to use any programming language to define a define a circuit? Because it's a hardware. Why I cannot directly tell the uh, structure, right? Why I cannot directly define the structure? Why I have to use any programming language? By defining the timings for, for optimization purpose. See, we should use the see the engineer started using Verilog or VHDL for design entry because so describing any circuit through its behavior is very easy rather than its internal circuit that is called a truth table right in UG classes every classes you have written what truth table what is truth table describing any circuit through its what its behavior if for example you take one mux if I ask one mux You take mux. Two, just take simple mux. Two is to one mux. So what is it? Internal circuit. How many can tell this? Internal circuit of two is to one mux. Through gate, right? Gate and its connection. How many can tell you what is the internal circuit? Pass transistor or by using gates only you can tell, right? It's very rare case to recall, but if I tell what is its behavior, how many, how can, how many can tell? What is behavior? Behavior of a mux. So it's very easy, right? Behavior is uh, telling behavior is very easy. What is the behavior? If select line is zero, what output Y will take? If select line S value is zero, what is the output? So Y is going to take I naught. If select line S is one, Y is going to take what? This is a behavior of a mux. So describing the behavior is easy for any circuit. But describing its internal internal structure is very difficult for engineer. I'm telling for simple circuit. Okay. So how to describe its behavior? I can easily use Verilog program if s equals equals zero. What happens? Y is nothing but equal to what? I naught. Else y is equal to what i even i can easily describe the behavior of a circuit by using very code or vhdl code. 
rather than directly entering into its internal behavior, internal circuit, gate and its connection. So what the engineer started doing, right? So we start, we will define the circuit by its behavior first. Then step by step process will convert right? from behavior to gates, gate to layout. Right? So if you take the complex circuit, like you, I will give an example, I want to design a, a IC for ATM machine. How do you do? This ATM machine, everyone knows, right? If I take I square C protocol, you don't know what is I square C protocol. I cannot explain that. So if you take I, ATM machine, how do you write the circuit for that? If I write, if I write the transit uh, gate level circuit for ATM machine, implementing ATM machine, will you write? No, it's impossible to write. Bigger circuit directly, I cannot write the gate level circuit. Okay, smaller circuit we can write. So first, what we do is ATM machine. We will first divide into different states: one state, second state, third state, fourth state. We define into define into what different states. So first state is always called as research state. Research state means that screen will be coming right. Like this is camera bank, like that screen will be coming. That is called as research state. When card is inserted, so research state means when card is not inserted, always it will be in what state? Research state only. Means in research state, if I get zero input, zero input means card is not inserted. Then I will be in what state? Research state only. If card is inserted, means if I get lock input as one, I'll go to what state? Next state. If input is one, I'll go to what state? Next state. And what is the output I have to do? All these things I have to write here. What is the output I want to I want to see on the screen? On the screen, I have to show that what I have to see. So next state will go. In the next state, what is the next state? Pin entering state. How to enter the pin? If pin is entered wrong or pin is not entered for a long time, then I am going to put I am going to get logic zero. I am going to put the output logic zero. If logic zero, I will go to what reset state. Right. Reset state means what is the meaning? The pin entered is wrong or either long time pin is not entered. I will go back to what? Reset state. So if pin entered is correct, then I'll go to next state. Logic one. If the output is logic one, I'll go to what state? Next state. This state is called as what? Amount entering state, right? Amount entering state. In amount entering state, what do I have to do? I have to enter the amount. If amount is not entered for long time, or amount entered is wrong. Means amount entered is wrong means you are entering the amount more than its balance. Or you are entering the amount like I want to give me 435 rupees. Your bank cannot give. So amount entry is not validated. Then I will get zero. That I will go to what state? Research state. If amount entered is valid, then I will go to what state? Next state. Cash dispatch state. So after cash is dispatched, I'll get logic one, I'll go to which state? Research state. So this entire bigger circuit, first we will form what? Different different states. And now we'll start writing the Verilog code to implement particular state. What is the behavior of particular state? You start writing the Verilog code. That is called as what? RTL coding. So why we use RTL coding? So RTL coding is used because we can describe the circuit based on the behavior. Circuit is described or design is described, circuit is described based on its behavior. So bigger circuit that will be broken into different states. And for each state, they will start writing the very lab program. What each state is going to do. So in that way, they use RTL coding. So RTL coding means it is very lab or VHDL. And the design it is in what form? Design is in the behavior form, correct? 
design is in behavioral form. Behavioral means what? Behavioral means in the RTL coding, you will be having more if statements, case statements, always block. So, all these things will be there in your RTL. Whether this behavioral coding your founder can understand? No, your founder can understand. Yes, please tell me if there are any doubts. If you have doubts, please unmute or else please mute it. So RTL coding, right? It is in the behavioral form. This behavioral form your foundry can't understand. So this behavioral form you have to convert it to gate level form. But before RT, after RTL coding, there is some team will come into picture, right? Like the functional verification team. So here, so you can be a RTL coding engineer or design. Is it, is it, he is called as a design engineer, right? RTL design engineer. You can write the RTL very long and VHL codes for bigger designs. Even you here, you have job opportunities. Next is functional verification engineer or design verification engineer. So what is role of functional verification engineer? Next step is functional verification. Functional verification means Verifying functionality of design. Verifying functionality of design is called as what? Functional verification. So how do we verify this functionality? Uh, using the test, test benches. Yes, by writing the test bench programs, right? See, we will apply different inputs for Max. I, I, I will apply one input like 0, 0, 0, I will apply. My I0 is 0, I1 is 0, and select line is 0. What is the output I expect? What is the output I should get? If select line is 0 and I0 is 0, if select line is 0, my S will take what? I0. What is I0? 0. I get 0 here. 0, 1, 0. What I will get? 0 only. 1, 1, 1, what I will get? 1, because my S is going to take I1. So for different combination of inputs, what output I am getting for this RTL program, I will check. Whether it is, if it is matching with intended output, right, then it is fine, RTL is working fine. Or if RTL is not working fine, you have to modify that. That is called as what? Functional verification. So verifying functionality of a design by applying what? By applying test cases. These are called as test cases, right? This is called as what? Test case. By applying test cases, you will verify it. So for, for, for smaller designs, applying test case is easy. For bigger designs, it's not so easy. Here I have only three inputs. How many combinations I'll get? Eight combinations. 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, 1, 0, 1, 0. I have eight combinations. But if I have but if we have 60 inputs, how many combinations will get? 2 raised to the power of 60. What is 2 raised to the power of 60? It is more than 10,000, I think. 10,000 combinations I cannot be applying. So next I have to decide which combination I have to apply to the design, which test case I have to apply so that I can test more, more code, more lines of a code I can test, which combination I have to apply. So like that they have to decide it carefully, right? And to do this functional verification, the engineers has to learn system very long. They have to learn system very long. They have to learn UVM. What is UVM? Universal 
What is UVM? Universal Verification, Universal verification Machine. Methodology. You have to learn all these things to become a functional verification engineer. This is just a verifying your RTL. But now design is in what form? Design is in the behavioral form still. So next step is convert this behavioral form to gate level form. Your design is in the if statement. Your design is in the case statements. Your design is in the always block. So convert that RTL design into gate level description. That step is called as what? Synthesis. So next step of your ASIC design flow is synthesis. Converting RTL into gate level netlist. It's called a synthesis. So we'll convert this RTL into gate level, gate and its connections. That is called a synthesis. Right? Now you tell me. I am converting this RTL to gate level, right? Who is going to give me this gate level information? And what gates I have to use to convert RTL into gate level? What are the gates I can use? Whether I can use AND gate, whether I can use MUX, whether I can use FIFLA. What gates I have to use to convert RTL into gate level? Who is going to give that information? So we use the files called as library files or liberty file. In the liberty file, I have standard cell information. By using that standard cells, right, we convert the RTL into gate level netlist. Right? So what are the inputs for synthesis? Want to perform synthesis, right? What are the inputs? Inputs for synthesis. So first it should be what? First it should be your RTL design, your very log or VHDL program, it is in the what form? That only will convert to gate level, right? So first is your RTL. RTL is dot V or dot VHD. VHD means dot V or dot VHD the extension, file extension. Dot V is a very log file, dot VHD is a VHDL file. So one is your RTL. Second one is Liberty file. Liberty or library file. That is your dot lib. The extension is dot lib. Liberty and library file contains what it contains? Timing and power information. Power information of standard cells. So, in the Liberty file, we have standard cells. By using the standard cells only, I have to convert this RTL into gate level netlist. So, what are the standard cells? Generally, are cells like inverter, buffer. And gate, NAND gate, OR gate, NOR gate, XOR gate, um, half adder, MUX, EFI flop, AO gate, AOI gate, OAI gate. These are all the basic gates is used. These are the gates called as what? Standard cells. So this cells information is present in what file? Liberty file. What information? Timing. Timing means what? Delay of these gates. What's the delay? Power means how much power they are going to consume. There are different types of power again. Leakage power, short circuit power, switching power. So all those informations of these cells is present in which file? Liberty file. So by using this files only, we convert 
this RTL into gate level net list. Right. By using these cells, the cells present in which file, the body file are library file. Next, what is the next input? Design oh, file. constraints file, sir. Constraints, right? You want constraints file. Constraint means dot FPC. FPC means synopsis design constraints file. See, constraints file means name only tells it. Constraint. Constraint means my design should meet these constraints. See, doing without constraint is very easy, but doing with constraint is very difficult. Right? See, constraints. So, one, uh, I can tell you like one example like if your parents tell to go to VLSI Guru and come back, however, you want is easy. But if they tell go and come back with 20 rupees, it's very difficult. 20, 20 rupees means you have to cast the bus, you have to come here, you have to go by bus. Right? It's very difficult. 20 rupees, go by, go and come back by 20 rupees is difficult. So, constraints means, so convert to gate level is very easy, but meeting the constraint is difficult. Constraints means mainly we have timing constraints. I'm not telling timing information. I'm using the word what timing constraints. Timing constraints means mainly, mainly we have, see, we have plenty of information again in the constraints. So to as briefly, I can tell that mainly you have clock frequency. What are the clocks used in your design? What is its frequency of operation? See, whatever RTL you have, you have clock in that and this clock is working in megahertz. So you synthesize your design so that your design also works with what? Megahertz. So that clock information, instead of clocking clock frequency, you can tell clock information is present. What clock with what time period is operating? That information is present in STC file. Apart from that, you have plenty of information like set input delay, set output delay. All those things will be seen in the future classes. So for the time being, I can tell only this much. So we have clock information. So operate your design with this clock frequency. That information you have. Now, these are inputs inputs for synthesis, right? What's the output of synthesis? Uh, gate level uh, zero log file. Gate level netlist. Output of synthesis. What is the output of synthesis? It is gate level netlist. So what gate level netlist consists of? Gate level netlist is also a Verilog or VHDL code. It is also a Verilog or VHDL code. RTL is also Verilog or VHDL code. Then what is the difference? See, RTL can have any statements, assign statements, if statements, case statements, any statements RTL can have. But gate level netlist should be having only gates and its connections. So this information should be present in what? Gate level netlist. You should not be having any other information. Only should be having gate and its connections. That is called as what? Gate level netlist. So gate level netlist basically I can tell it is in a structural form. So how the gate level netlist should be? To take one example, right? For gate level netlist. Uh, okay, you take here, you have one AND gate. You have this AND gate again connected to one R gate. That is connecting to one inverter. So you have these three gates in your design. For simplicity, assume that these three gates are connecting to A port, B port, 
C port and output is connecting to D port. So you have AND gate. This AND gate inputs are A1 pin, A2 pin, Y pin. You have R gate. R gate is having A1 pin, A2 pin, Y pin. Inverter is having A pin and Y pin. So here A and A matches. So instead of A, I use, um, I change the inputs. So we'll change, we'll use the inputs as M, N, O, and P. These are the inputs of my block. And intermediate signals, right? These are the intermediate signals, intermediate nets. The intermediate nets are called as wires. N1, this intermediate net I called as what? N2. So how, how will be the very large program for this? Gate level at least. The same way, right? How you write the Verilog program? Module, module name, module name, I use it, use it as what? Some name, temp. What are the inputs? M, N, O, what is the output? P. So what are the input here? Input is M, N, O, what is the output? Output is P. What are the nets in between? Wires, right? Net is defined as wire. What are the intermediate nets? N1 and N2. So next, we have to define each and every cell. So here, this cell has some name in library file, right? This Liberty file. In the Liberty file, for this, there is, for this cell, there is some name. So we assume that this cell is having a name called as AND2. And this R gate is having a name called as R2. This inverter is having a name called as INV. So first I have to define this cell. So AND2. AND2 means it is what? Two input. AND gate. This is a name present in the Liberty file. Or library file. The same name my tool is going to use. After that, my synthesis tool will give an instance name, instance name U1. See, in the design, I can be having n number of AND gates. From one gate, one AND gate to another AND gate, I should be having some difference, right? So for that reason, I have one instance name. This instance name is given by synthesis tool. U1 dot A1 means where this A1 pin is connecting. Dot A1, dot A1 means where it's A1 pin is connecting. A1 pin is connecting to what? M1, M port. Right? It's connecting to M port. Where A2 pin is connecting? Dot of A2. A2 pin is connecting to which port? N port. Next. Where is Y pin is connecting of this cell? Y pin is connecting to which net? N1 net. Dot Y of N1. Next, R gate, R2. So, U2, instance name. It has given instance name. My synthesis tool will give different instance name. Every cell will be having different instance name. U2. So, this is connecting to where? A1. A1 pin is connecting to what? A1 pin is connecting to N1 net. A2 pin is connecting to port. Okay. O port. Y pin is connecting to N2 net. This Y is connecting to N2 net. At last I have inverter, right? Inverter. This inverter has instance name what? U3 and dot A of N2 comma dot Y of it, y, is, y pin is connecting what? Y pin is connecting to P. End module. Only this information should be present in the net list. Gate and its connection. No assigned statement, no if statement, no case statements, nothing. Only it should be having gates and its connection. This information is present in the net list. See, here connection is maintained, right? You can see here N1 is connecting to output pin of your AND gate, correct? Y pin is connecting to what? N1 net. And the same N1 net is connecting to what input pin of your R gate. 
So in, internally, my tool can understand that output of AND gate is connecting to what? Input of ARG1. The connection is established here. Similarly here, N2 net, right? N2 net is connecting to output pin of R gate and it's connecting to input pin of inverter. So connection is established. So here I am not written N2, sorry. N2. Connection is established. Correct? So for this reason, right? It is called as gate level netlist. So that the design is in the gate level now. We don't have layout, only we have what? Gate and its connection. The entire behavioral description we have converted into gate level description. That is the output of your synthesis. See, after synthesis, only gate level entry extraction is not important. We should also see that area report. How much area cells are taking, right? Area report. Timing report. Whether timing is met or not. See, a timing report is seen. Whatever the clock I have given, right? Clock, frequency of clock. Through this, we do setup and hold analysis. Setup and hold analysis. Energy after synthesis will not do hold, we'll do only setup. Setup analysis will do. Whether my timing is met or not, timing report. Next what? Power report. So whether power is in the limit or not, all these things we have to check. If it is not, if the power is very high, everything will have to take some measures to reduce the power. So implement some of the power reducing techniques. So what are the power reducing techniques we have to implement? We can implement. See, in my mobile phone, I have a camera module. Camera controlling, in the IC, I, have, I am having camera controlling module. This camera controlling module, so whenever the camera gets on, whatever the lights, it is reflected from the camera, right? That will be stored in a charge coupling devices. That is a MOSFETs. That is present in IC only. If my camera is not on, whether giving to power this power to this module is important. So I will use camera once in a month, sometimes once in a year. So giving the power all the time is not important, right? Simply these cells will take the power, unnecessary my battery will get drained. So giving the power continuously to this block is not important. Then cut the power to this block, cut the VDD to this block whenever it is not used. That method I can implement, that is called as power gating method. Power gating. Power gating. Power gating. Power getting method. So like that, right? We can we have different power addiction techniques, power getting design, multi-voltage design. We have clock getting design. All these designs can reduce the power in VLSI chip. So if power is more, we have to implement all these designs and we have to reduce the power. So how, how we are understanding now synthesis, right? It's not so easy in the real world. It's we have to implement different techniques to ready. We have to, to meet all these things. Okay, so all those things we learn in the later stages. Now only I have a demo. I can tell only why is why we are doing PD and what we'll do in physical design and how the course content is working. So after synthesis. Next step is physical design. So before physical design, one team will come into picture. A team is called as one team, DFT team. DFT means what? Design for testability. What this team will do? Yes, what they do? They are not pretty test punches. That is done by functional verification. They will modify the unit list. Or there is a team called as gate level simulation team. They will do it. DFT team will not generate the test punches generally. They will do logic. See, here chip, once it is fabricated, I am talking once the chip is fabricated. 
once a chip gets fabricated for example you have one chip if it is fabricated coming out of the foundry how to understand this chip is working properly everything is fabricated properly so everything inside the chip right everything works in nanoscale right the metal layer is in nanoscale means that the distance between one metal to another metal is in the nanometer while fabricating the metal layer is not etched properly it can be etched like this this metal can be etched like this another metal it can be etched like this so both are internally shorting if they, if they get shot any one metal layer any two metal layers are shorting like this one chip will not function properly this type of things is more likely to happen because in the foundry etching happens by using chemicals acids etching they will not use any grinder to etch it right to remove the metal layers that happens through acids somewhere the acids may not etch properly all these things are common right whenever no these reports are not in the verilog format they are in their normal normal reports they are they are not in the verilog format these reports are not in the so we can write okay second they are not in the verilog format they are in the normal text, text format they are in the normal text format Okay, so I was discussing about DFT, right? What is DFT? Once chips get fabricated, inside the chip everything is working properly or not, we cannot test easily. So we should test by applying some test vectors. So pass some test vectors to the chip and get these test vectors back. Analyze the test vectors. <laughs> Based on that, you predict whether chip is fabricated properly or not. This is doing after fabrication. So testing the chip after fabrication is called as post silicon validation. Post silicon validation. The final stage of the chip. Yes, after fabrication is final stage of chip. After we are not doing it. That is done by post silicon validation here. That happens in foundry itself. They will verify the chip. So by applying some test cases, test vectors to the chip. Is there a set value to that? Yes, that is what I'm that is what the role of DFT. So to facilitate this testing operation, right? The flip flops in the chip bar should be connected in the scan chain manner. Whatever flip flops I have in the chip, right? They should be connected in what manner? Scan chain manner. So then only I can pass the data, right? I should pass the data somewhere inside a chip. First I'll make the flip flops connecting in scan chain manner, then you pass what? The data inside the chip wherever you want that so to facilitate this testing operation your dft team so you can see this is their report This is your report, right? Report is nothing but what is your internal power. How much is your internal power? Internal power is one second. I open in GVM. Yes,
is the power report it is a normal form right what is your internal power how much what is your switching power it's 1.34 into 10 to the power of e raised to power of 10, 0 9 means 10 to the power of 0 9 pico watt what is the leakage power what is the total power total power is 4.89 into 10 to the power of 9 pico watt this is the report this is not in the very log format and not in the vhdl format normal report it is this is a power report similarly you can get the area report you can get the timing report just i shown what is this reports okay next we'll that report channel we'll see in the future classes right so now we are discussing about dft so what is what the team dft will do see dft team will do dft team will add some additional logic in inside the gate level netlist they will add some additional logic means additional gates inside gate level netlist so that the chip can be easily tested after fabrication i can easily pass the test vectors inside the chip so for that reason right my dft team will add some additional logic so add some they will add some additional logic Additional logic means gates. Logic inside the netlist. They will add inside the netlist because at this stage the chip is not yet fabricated, correct? They will add inside the netlist what I get out of what? Synthesis stage. Add some additional logic inside the netlist so that chip is easily tested. fabrication so they can use this see there are some techniques called as like uh, insert scan chain uh, built-in self-test atpg boundary scan atpg boundary scan they have different methods. They see that is separate course here. Yeah. Boundary scan. So by using these methods, right? They will insert some additional logic in what? In our netlist so that the chip can be easily tested after fabrication. To facilitate the testing process, they add some additional logic. If they add some additional logic in the gate level netlist, the functionality should not change, correct? Functionality, whatever is implemented, that should not change. So I can use another word here without affecting functionality, without affecting functionality. VFT team will add in our netlist only, right? Our netlist is in Verilog or VHD. They will add the cells in Verilog or VHD alone. Yes. Good understanding of very log, good understanding of these techniques. They should be having. Complete very log understanding is not required for DFT, but at least what is a gate level netlist at this format? How to modify the netlist? They should be knowing. How can they modify the netlist? How to extract the information from netlist? So TCL, right? Tool command language. TCL is a language or any other language like Python, Perl. So it should do some file operation and it should extract the information from the netlist. Every team should be good at scripting. Even PD team should be good at scripting. They should be knowing TCL. See, for using TCL, Python or Python, I'm using R, anyone. If you know TCL or Python, you can do file operations easily. I'll give one file which is having 10,000 lines and I will ask extract the lines which is having module in it. How do you do that? Only get the lines where you have module keyword. How to extract those lines? I have 10,000 lines. If I scroll one by one, I'll take three hours to do that. If I just write some small code to extract, it will extract in two minutes. So they should be good in scripting also, TC allows. So we will teach TCL. See, TCL for physical design, TCL is most important. See, only TCL, your tool can understand. Tool can understand only TCL. 
python is added advantage see python has many constructs python can be used only for file operations but tcl my tool can understand only tcl my tool cannot understand python tool cannot understand python tool can understand only tcl python or perl my tool cannot understand only my tool can understand only tcl but doing file operation by using tcl we can do but it is very easy by using python and perl of perl so if you know python and perl is added advantage in the industry but tcl is sufficient to work on the bigger designs tcl is must tool command language is must so after dft after DF, dft modifying one second let right? me we'll check these reports my tool will create by taking the information from the liberty file right how much power each cell is going to consume it's present in which file liberty file by taking the information from liberty file it will create my tool will generate the files area report timing report power report for that reason only we are giving this liberty file as input right i clearly mentioned here liberty file as timing and power information it will pick the information for so what is see in my design i have three inverters and two buffers one inverter is having a two micrometer area for three inverter, inverters how much six micrometer two and gate you assume one and gate is having five micrometer area two and gate how much area 10 micrometer so 10 plus 6 is how much 16 micrometer what is your total area 16 micrometer so like that it will pick the information from what dot lift file and the power right you have different types of power internal power leakage power switching power so each and every power you have to understand what is the power that we will do it in the future classes what is power how to understand power so the course the basic course starts from digital i'll come to that course curriculum we will not deviate from the topic we'll come to the course curriculum later so after dft modifying the netlist right that netlist will go to what team which team physical design right This will go to physical design team. So, what is the role of physical design team now? In the netlist, what you have? The netlist will go to DFT. DFT will modify the netlist, and the netlist will come to what team? Physical design team. We'll get the netlist. What is our role? See, our role is to. I'll show here on give me one second. Give me the time. So we have to create a 
chip like this right? so what is chip contains nothing right you cannot see anything so we have to make the layout of our cells we should place in this core area right here we have layout of our cells each and every cell it is right if you want to see the cell you can is one cell is one cell complete cell what is a cell land gate so place the cells inside the core area what we are placing layout of a cell place inside a ic that is called as core area and connect them according to the netlist right where is the connection in the netlist we have connections so these connections this output of and gate is connecting to what input of our gate according to the connections connect through metal layers that is what your role is right that is the role of physical design engineers the main role we can see this is a all this is a layout is not clearly visible because we have disabled it to because it will take huge memory this one cell the cell is buffer the cell is nand gate so place the cells and connect through metal layers all these are what metal layers these are what metal layers so role of physical design engineers is convert i can tell convert gate level description to layout level or physical level design physical means layout level right physical level design so this is the role of physical design team by meeting what by meeting area you have to meet the area time timing timing we have to meet timing has to be met so timing in during physical design we will do the timing check by using spa that is what is what spa spa means static timing analysis and by meeting what power so this is the role of physical design engineers so what is the, what we have to do we have to create a area this area is called as core area and die area inside is core area and die area place the standard cells and macros right and connect them through what connect them through metal layers that is the role of physical design engineers so now what are all the things we do in physical design so that will take see we'll take a break now a 10 minutes break we'll take now time is 11:55 we'll take 10 minutes break again we'll start at 11:05 we'll see what we do in physical design what are the topics covered in physical design and how the curriculum is at the last and how the what are the timings that we'll see in the last so next one hour till we have next one hour discussion on what we do in physical design so we'll take a break i will continue at 11:05 
Hello, is it audible? Hello. Yes, sir, we audible. Yes. Sir. Okay, so I told you right. What is physical design? See, physical design mainly starts with the partitioning, right? Block level design, in the block level design, we have floor plan. Right? In floor plan, we do creating. Creating core area and die area. Creating port placement. <laughs> Macro placement. Power planning. So physical design, right? First start with partitioning. See, if the design is very big, if the design is very big like this. Design is very big. So we cannot do physical design for the big design. Big design means, for example, I have uh, five lakh cells in the design. I have five lakh cells in the design. So I cannot do physical design for five lakh cells. Though. So RT we can do one or one and a half lakh cells, right? So then what we do is the bigger design, we will partition, we will make into smaller designs like this. One design, one block, second block, right? Second block, third block, fourth block, fifth and sixth block. So bigger design, this is A block, B block, C block, D block, E block, F block. So the team or a person who is handling this bigger design, he is called as what? Chip top. Chip top. So chip top will partition into different blocks. These are called as block. Block A, block B, block C, block D, and block E and block F. So each and every block is given to the students for the physical design. So each of this block is given to the students. Block A, Block B, Block C, Block D, Block E, Block F. It's given to each and every student. Now for Block A, or I can tell each and every engineer, PD engineer. So Block A will do, one person will do physical design for Block A, one person will do physical design for Block B, one person will do physical design for Block C, one person will do physical design for Block D. Right? Like that each and every person will do physical design for each and every block. Right. Now, if you take any one block, block level design. So now here in, in VLSI Guru, we'll start with what block level design. So in this block, in this block level design, you have 52,000 standard cells. How many standard cells? 52,000 standard cells. So we should place this 52,000 standard cells and we have to route them. Right? It has, this block has 40 macros. What are macros? See, macros are Unmuted. complex cells. Complex cells which are optimized which are optimized those are called as macros so this design has six clocks four master clock right two generated clocks This is a specification of design. Which design we are doing, right? 
this having this many things right so we are doing physical design of this block so this block design block level design starts with what floor plan so floor plan starts with creating core area and die area so we have to create this core area and die area so this is called as core area right and this is called as what outside thing is called as die area this is called as die area inside boundary is called as core area outside boundary is called as die area this is core area this is die area So when you have core area, when you have die area, right? So how to create this core area? So we have to create the core area, right? So this core area should occupy all the cells, right? All the cells and macros. So we have to. There are different methods to create core area. That is what we will see in our course, right? how to create core area different methods to create core area and die area what parameters is going to govern creating core area and die area that is what we are going to look into that right so different uh, parameters governing core area and die area creation of core area and die area So after creating core and die area, what's the next thing? Port placement. See so what are port placement? Port placement are nothing but your inputs and outputs of a block, right? So you have a block. The input and outputs of a block is called as what? Port placement. You will place the ports in between core area and die area. So place the ports here. So the signals will come to your block through what? Input ports. <coughs> it will go out of your block through what? Output ports. So based on the, your chip top suggestion, place the ports. Right? The chip top will suggest that how to place the port. You cannot place wherever you want. Correct? You cannot place wherever you want. For example, if A and B are communicating, then I have to place all the output ports of A here only, right? Then easily that A can easily communicate with what? B. So input ports of B should be present here. Then outputs of A can be easily connected to what? B. So based on your chip top suggestion, you should decide where to place your ports. Right? That is called a port placement. All these are ports. So these ports are just a metal layer. These ports are what? Metal layer. They are just a metal layer.
So next is after see port placement is not direct what I told. So we have to write some TCL script also. See if I tell that place the ports only within this region, all the input ports place here. How to place that? Place all the output ports only in this region. How to place that? So we have to follow some TCL scripting to do that. See ports will be generally not five to six. We will be having hundreds of input ports, hundreds of output ports. So if I tell that place the input ports here only in this region, how to do that? So that is what we have to focus on, right? That is what we are interested in. So for that reason, we have to write some TCL program to do the port placement. Right? So next step is what? Macro placement. Okay, first we'll define what is macros. What are macros? The macros are complex cells. Complex cells which are already designed and optimized. See what is your ultimate role? Our ultimate role is to place the layout of standard cells here, right? So we are drawing, we are not drawing the layout of standard cells. That is drawn by layout team. Layout team will draw the layout of standard cells. So this layout of standard cells, they will give you in a file called as LEF file. Right? Apart from these three files, we want these these two files. We want get level netlist. Along with that, we want what? We want LEF file layout exchange format. That file we want. That LEF file contains layout of standard cells. The layout team will draw. So ultimately, I have to place the cells here. Layout of cells. And I have to connect these cells by using what? By using metal layers. I have to connect by using what? Metal layers. That is what our ultimate rule, the role, right? Physical design role. So now, what are the standard cells? Like AND gate, OR gate, XOR gate. Right? Those are called as standard cells. But there are few cells called as macro cells. So macros are complexes which are already designed and optimized. See, there are few cells like SRAM, RAM. There are few cells generally we use is SRAM and PLL, phase lock loop. So these cells will directly take the layout and will place it. So what is inside this layout, right? We may be having plenty of cells. We are not bothered because this SRAM is already designed by some other person that directly will purchase the layout of this SRAM and will place in our design. That is called as what? Macros. Why we are purchasing some from some person? Because we believe that this SRAM is the best SRAM in terms of power, timing, and area. So my okay, I have a company. My role is to produce only these macros. I'll I'll do the physical design, the same process I'll do only to produce macros. Some other person who is doing physical design for bigger plot, he will purchase my macro and he will do his physical design. He'll directly purchase my layout. So you know like a polyogram mix, right? Polyogram mix, everyone know. MTR polyogram mix, rasam powder, everyone know. Every see to reduce your time, you will not prepare that from the scratch. You will directly purchase from the MTR or GRP, some other company, and directly use in your cooking. Why? You believe that that is the best. If that is the best thing which I can readily get in the market with the with the low cost, why I have to do from the scratch? Writing the very lab code, doing the physical design. So with any complex design which are readily available in the market, directly I purchase and I the layout I will use I will use in my design. Those are called as what macros. So like that, right? We have macros. So first we'll do macro placement because macros will be less in number. So hardly we will be having so 70 to 100 macros in the design. Not more than that. The count of standard cells will be in thousands, but macros will be generally from uh, like not 70, it will be even it will be from 30, 30 to 100, ranging between 30 to 100 in the design. First, we will place this complex cells in the design. So, with SRAM, we can design through writing very low code and doing the physical design, same way. PLL we cannot design through physical design. 
that is analog design right pll can be designed only through analog through analog clock what is pll analog design so pll inside the pll even sinusoidal wave is also formed so why pll is used to change the clock frequency right if i have pll i am i am giving the clock of 250 megahertz and output i can get 500 megahertz to change the clock frequency we use what phase lock loop it's an analog clock so we cannot design through the physical design or classic design flow this has to be designed through analog design they have to write the schematic of pll and they have to draw the layout for that after tying the layout the layout information they'll give to us we we'll directly use in our physical design that is called as what these are called as macros so macros if you have any right please place that first please place the macros so macro placement is very very challenging step in physical design so based on your macro placement your timing area of the design everything is going to depend right everything is going to depend if you do boot macro placement your design will be very good if your macro placement is bad your design is bad your design will suffer with timing it will suffer with congestion you cannot route easily right so to avoid all these parameters means you should do the good macro placement so here we'll study what are the macro placement guidelines right macro placement guidelines Next is power planning. Okay. What are the guidelines for macro placement? We'll study. After performing macro placement, next we'll go with what? Power planning. Sir, is so it? Power? Sir, it. Excuse me, sir. Tell me. Uh, sir, it is good to say that macros are the standard cells, but standard cells are not the macros. Can we say that? Mm, yes. So, see, macros are inside the macros. You can be having many standard cells. But you you are not bothered about what is present inside, right? In physical design, you are worried only about uh, to connect these macros. Output of macro will connect to standard cells. You are worried about only about that, right? But inside the macro, it is a complex cell, right? It is fabricated through standard cells only. It can be formed. Inside the macro, you will be having plenty of standard cells, layout of standard cells. But you are not designed it. Some other person has designed it directly. You are using in your design because you feel that that is good. For example, now you do the physical design of this block. For example, you are doing some risk core processor, right? You do physical design, complete physical design. You do. After that, this you sell as a macro. Some person, right? He wants some some other person is doing physical design. In this physical design, he want one processor, and remaining he has some his own blocks. He want one processor, and he is not interested in designing the processor. He will directly purchase from you. For him, your block, your entire this block is what macro to him. Because he is not interested in writing the very large code per processor. Because he has his own experimental logics, experimental other cells. He has not written any. He is not interested to write the very large code and synthesize the risk core processor. So what he will do is he will directly purchase the layout of risk core processor. So you have done the lay, uh, physical design of risk core processor later you will generate the layout and that layout you will sell to what this person he will directly purchase it and he will use it in your in his design for him your block is a layout in your block what is present your standard cells and internal macros right? so macro is nothing but the design which is already optimized right which is already optimized and designed you need not to worry about designing it like doing writing very large code and Synthesizing, you need not to worry about that. Any design, it can be. It's a complex design. Yes, sir. I can tell macro is a bigger, bigger level of standard cells. We can tell that. But standard cells. i can even change to meet my area to meet my 
power requirement i can use different standard cells see standard cells i get with a different uh, like i get inverter only right i get inverter different flavors hvt i, ha I have inverter lvt i have inverter rvt rvt means regular threshold voltage lvt means low threshold voltage here hvt means high threshold voltage see high threshold voltage has more delay low threshold voltage has what less delay and rvt is having moderate delay so which one is better lvt is better right because it is having what less yes, delay but lvt is having more power consumption if it is having less delay means it's not so easy right even it is having more power consumption now decide a region where you are having time critical means you have to meet the timing at the in, the, in this region you use what lvt some other where in some regions where it is not time critical you use what hvt because lvt is even having less delay but they have more power consumption compared to hvt right? to reduce the power i should use hvt to reduce the timing delay i should use what lvt i have to take a decision where i have to use hvt where i have to use lvt or my tool should take a decision so for standard cells right i can modify to optimize my design i can modify the standard cells i can change the standard cells use hvt or use what lvt or use what rvt i can change the standard cells to improve my design optimize means improving the design but macros you cannot modify macros will not come with uh, all these flavors so macros this is the best macro then only we purchase right always always we not purchase so macros I have used the word they are already optimized 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 that is the best macro okay next we'll write we'll do power planning power planning so i have 52000 cells in my design all cells should get power planning is then all cells should get vdd and vss power correct yes layout should get vdd and vss right they should get vdd and vss power this vdd and vss all cells should get this vdd and vss power or 52000 cells so i should do the power planning all cells and macros should get vdd and vss power vdd and vss power Or I can get, I can tell that VDD and ground, power and ground. This connection all cells should get without fail. And IR drop should be less. Right? You should be having less IR drop. If for example, you have one VDD connection here, and you are connecting some cell here, and you are making a VDD connection from here to here. Just assume you are making connection like this. This is a VDD port. Now at this point, the VDD value is like 1.5 volts. At lower technology, VDD will be like 1.5 volts, 0.95 volts. It is not like 5 volts or 2.5 volts. The even VDD is also changed. Even VDD is also reduced. So here VDD is 1.5 volts. And this VDD is passed through what metal layer, right? This metal layer is going to conduct current. And this metal layer is having what? Resistance. Because of resistance and it is connecting current, then on this metal layer, we have IR drop. V is equal to what? I into R. Out of 1.5 volts, 0.2 volts will drop here. And remaining only 1.3 volts will reach to what? Standard cells. And this voltage is already dropped on the metal layer in the form of heat. Metal, whatever the voltage drop happens on the metal layer, right? right? That will convert to what? Heat. So this voltage is gone. So how much voltage is reaching to cell? 1.3 volts. I expect I expect how much to reach? 1.5, but how much is reaching? So this is called as IR drop. So we should do efficient power planning to see that this IR drop is minimized. We have this less IR drop. 
So how to reduce this IR drop? How to do the power planning to reduce IR drop? That we will see, right? Power planning as IR drop has to be reduced. So power planning is done to reduce IR drop. So after floor planning, we have placement. What is placement? So placing all standard cells. Placing all standard cells in core area. What is what? Placement. But what we are going to place? We are going to place what layout of our cells, right? Here we are placing all the standard cells. This is called as placing standard cells. So what are placed here? Layout of cells. What are placed here? Layout of our cells. So that is called as placement. So after placement, we do many checks. So do checks after placement. So we'll do checks like congestion, congestion, congestion means whether all cells can be routable or not. For routing, I have enough space or not. I have 52,000 cells if I place and if I cannot route them or connect them, then it is of no use, right? That is called as what? Congestion. So next we'll check, right? Uh, like um, some max trans and max cap violation that we'll see, right? Whenever we do in the max trans and max cap violation. So we will do a static timing analysis, STA. Static timing analysis means setup and setup violation whether we have any setup violation or not. All these checks we'll do. If all these checks are validated, next we'll go to what? We'll go for CTS. Yes, CTS means clock tree synthesis. See here, before placement strike, right, in our syllabus, we'll also study what is SPA. So we'll study low power techniques first. Low power techniques. So four techniques are, so we'll study multi-voltage design, multi-voltage design, <coughs> clock gating design, Multi PT cells, then power getting design. So, what are these designs? How it is going to reduce the power? How we can reduce the power by using these designs. So when we want to implement designs, what are the additional changes we have to do in the floor plan? That we'll study in what? Low power techniques. After low power techniques, we will also study STA, static timing analysis. See, physical design is very simple, but doing physical design, meeting what? Timing, power and area is very difficult. So if I want to meet the power, I want to implement what? Low power techniques. So if I want to implement that, right, I want to meet the timing means I have to do this check, right? Static timing analysis. Static timing analysis. So we will study this. So static timing analysis, we will study like what is cell delay? Cell delay, parameters affecting cell delay. Affecting cell delay.
So next we'll study about the setup and hold violations. So next we'll study about um like max trans and max cap violations and max cap violation duty conditions process variation temperature right this process voltage and the temperature how it is affecting cell delay so purity conditions so next we will study about uh, like uh, clock getting check clock getting check handling synchronous signals handling asynchronous signals so we will also study about right like some clock parameter what is q meter what is latency skew latency jitter how it affects setup and hold right skew latency jitter affecting setup and hold so handling into reg and rest out path handling into reg and rest out path So next is so these things right we have to study before what placement so this setup check only is done here right after placement so setup check and the setup check only we are doing here max cap and max trans what we have learned here that check only we are doing in the design this sta is done after each and every step so we will do after placement after cts after routing every step we'll do that not only one step so next is clock tree synthesis see this is not a step in a flow these things we have to learn to handle timing and power these things we have to implement in our design or we have to do these checks right so to implement what to get a better timing and better power so next is clock tree synthesis what is clock tree synthesis So clock tree synthesis means we have to build a clock tree. Build a clock tree using inverters and buffers. Is called as clock tree synthesis. Why we have to build it? By using clock tree only latency will increase. What's the main reason for building it? See, if I don't build a clock tree, right, I'll be having one clock port, generally. 
and this clock port will be connecting to many flip flops so how many flip flops you will be having in your design like you will be having like thousands of flip flops this one clock port is connecting to thousands of flip flops will connect to thousands of flip flops so what is the load on this port load capacitance on this clock port right the load capacitance is very huge the load capacitance is nothing but pin capacitance of each clock pin of the flip flops your pin capacitance right the sum of all the pin capacitance is nothing but what load capacitance on the clock port if each flip flop is having 0.5 fermi farad pin capacitance then if i have 1000 flip flops what is the load 500 fermi farads right the load is what 500 fermi farads so if this much huge load is there on the clock port then what is clock raising clock raising and clock falling clock raising means i have to charge this entire capacitance so charging will take time because i'm having huge load right charging will take time and discharging also will take time so where is a clock signal clock signal has become what a triangle signal if i directly drive the clock right without building the clock tree instead of clock signal what i am getting triangle signal because huge load on the clock pin because clock is directly connecting to flip flops so then to reduce this load what we do is we will start building the clock tree by using buffers mainly buffers or inverters back to back inverters okay how to build a clock tree so first what i do is through this clock port right i use three buffers i use three buffers one buffer two buffer and three buffers so now this clock port is driving how many cells only three cells the load capacity is reduced now load capacity is how much 0.5 for me farad 0.5 for me farad 0.5 for me it's only 1.5 for me farad Charging 1.5 Fermi Farad is very fast, right? My clock signal will change very fast. Charging 1.5 Fermi Farad will happen immediately. And discharging also happens what? Immediately like this. Now, this buffer will connect to this flip flop. So, I have more length, wire length. If wire length is more, again, the load capacitance on this buffer will become more. On this buffer output, right, the load capacitance will become more, more wire length. More wire length, more capacitance, wire capacitance. To reduce the wire capacitance, what I will do, I will use one more buffer here. And I will connect to this flip flop. To reduce the capacitance, what I will do, I will use one more buffer, I will reduce it, I will connect to this flip flop. So this buffer I will connect here, right. I will use one more buffer here, I will connect to this flip flop. I'll connect here, right? I, by using one more buffer, right? I'll connect to this. So by using buffers, right? I build a clock tree. So my port is turned into th these three buffers, and this buffer is connecting to one flip flop and one buffer, and this buffer is connecting to one flip flop and one buffer, and this buffer is connecting to one flip flop. So like that, right? We have built a clock tree. So if I build a clock tree, I will, I will be having less clock transition. This clock transition is very less and I get the proper clock signal like this. But because of buffer delay, right? Because of buffer delay, if I get the positive edge here at 0 nanosecond, at 0 nanosecond, I am getting positive edge here at port. But this positive edge will reach to the flip flops after some time because I have what? Buffer delay. The same positive edge is reaching after 0.2 nanosecond here. Here it is reaching after 0.3 nanosecond. Here it is reaching after 0.5 nanosecond. The clock will start reaching late. That is called as latency. This is called as what? Latency. So latency is nothing but time taken by the clock to reach their respective flip flops. They are reaching late because, because of cell delay, right? In between. Cell delay and net delay. 
they are reaching very late. So this is called as clock tree synthesis. Building clock tree using inverters and buffers. So how to build this clock tree? Right? The latency has to be reduced. I should be having less latency. Right? Build the clock tree with less latency. Latency means time taken by the clock to reach from what clock port to the flip flops. And if I have more buffers in between, I have more latency. So I should see that clock tree is built with less latency, means with less buffers, with less latency. And skew. So skew is nothing but difference in clock reaching between two fifth loops. So here clock is reaching at 0.2 nanosecond. Here clock is reaching after what time? 0.5 nanosecond. What is the difference? 0.5 minus 0.2. What is the time difference? 0.3 nanosecond. So time difference in clock reaching two different fifth loops. That is called as what? Skew. The time difference in clock reaching two different fifth loops should be not very huge. That should be very less. So I should build the clock tree with less latency and less skew. So after building clock tree, again I have to do this what? STA, right? Do STA. So do all these checks, right? Max cap, max transition. So congestion, right? all these checks we have to do again. Congestion means whether I can route the cells or not, right? That is called as congestion. STA, here we not only do setup and hold. So here we do setup violation check. Setup and hold check. Clock getting check. Recovery and removal check. Recovery and removal check is nothing but asynchronous. Yeah, I'm handling mentioned here handling asynchronous signals. So asynchronous reset, how to handle it? That is recovery and removal check. So analyze Q and latency. If it is very high, this Q and latency is very high. Then analyze why, why why it is very high. Try to reduce it. Right? Analyze. Q and So next is routing. Routing is nothing but connecting all the standard cells by using what? Metal layers, right? Connect all the standard cells by using what? Metal layers. Like this. Stand only not only standard cells, even macros also, right? Ports also, correct? Ports also has to be connected, correct? Connect the ports, standard cells and macros by using metal layers, right? That is called as routing. Connecting standard cells, ports and macros by using metal layers. That is called as routing. So after routing, we have to do DRC and LVS check. DRC and LVS check have to be done. DRC means design rules, design rule check. DRC stands for design rule check. Design rule check. Design rule check means, see there are some rules even from the foundry. 
while routing right? between one metal layer to another metal layer, I have to maintain in some minimum spacing. Right? So while routing, right, between one metal layer to another metal layer, maintain what minimum spacing. This is called a spacing. So a metal layer should have minimum width. This is called as width. Minimum width I have to maintain. Minimum spacing I have to maintain. There are some OR rules. So routing the metal layers by maintaining some rules, right? That is called as what? Design rules check. So we'll study what are all the rules and how to fix it if there's any violation, right? Fixing methods. So next is LVS. What is LVS? Layout versus schematic. So what we'll do here? See, layout means it is this physical design is your layout. This is a layout. What is schematic here? Schematic is netlist. Right? Here we don't have not RTL, the netlist. Router this stage netlist. See, I can obtain the netlist of this stage. A tool can get it. The netlist. Netlist means netlist has what? Netlist has cells and its connections, right? This connections. This cells and its connections the netlist is having. So verify whether whatever see here AND gate is connecting to what? Input of OR gate. Whether same connection is happening here. Verify that. Output of AND gate is connecting to input of OR gate or not. That is called as what? Layout and its schematic. Layout. So connections present in the layout should be present in the schematic. That check is done. Verifies layout and netlist for connections. For connections. If unnecessary connections are found, which is not present in the netlist, that is shown as what? Short. See, there is no connection here, but the, some metal layer is crossing this. The metal layer is crossing like this. Then it's called as what? Short. But this connection is not present in the netlist. So there is a connection between this A cell and B cell, but my tool has not connected it. It's left as it is. That is called as what? Open. So unconnected, unconnected nets are called as opens. Unnecessary nets are found means it is called as what? Shorts. So my LVS will report opens and shorts. Opens and shorts are reported. Then, right? So routing completed. So your physical design totally completed. So after physical design completed, your role is not done. The, the design role is not done. Physical design engineer's role is done. But so we have to do some sign of checks. Sign of checks means after design is completed, do some sign of checks. So first sign of check is like power and Higher drop check, power and higher drop check. Whether my design is consuming less power or not, whether it is having more higher drop or not, right? The check is called as what? Power and higher drop check. PNR is placement and route. Power and higher drop check will not happen in PNR tool. See, for physical and for physical design, we use a tool called as ICC2. User tool called as what? ICC2. But this re requires separate license. This power and IR drop check is done by using a tool called as Redop tool. We'll take this design, router design, 
and we'll give to what tool? Radar tool. So Radar tool tool will do this check. Whether we are having less power and less IR drop or not. If it is having, if we are having more power and more IR drop, we'll do some suggestions, changing suggestions to more again PNR team. Communication happens between one team to another team. Product team again they are communicating back to the physical design team to make some changes to meet what power and higher power. Then timing sign off we have timing sign off. Timing sign off means static timing analysis. See so STA we can do in IGC2 after each and every step after placement after clock CTS after routing we can do in ICC2. But IC2 is not very accurate. So uh, to do accurately, we use another tool called as prime time. Here we use accurate tool called as what? Prime time, separate tool. So in this tool, we'll do STA, static timing analysis check. If it is violating, again I have to suggest the changes for what? PD team, that is called as ECO. Engineering change order. We have to suggest the changes again. So they will do the changes again, they'll give back the files. Again, this check has to go on. It's not one iteration, multiple iterations. Then last team is physical verification team. Physical verification team. They use, they will check like the same DRC. Right? They will do DRC and LV, they will do DRC, LVS and ERC by using a tool called as by using a tool called as IC validator. IC validator or caliber. IC validator is from synopsis, caliber is from mental graphics. When all these checks are passed, there is no violation. Then your block is integrated in full chip level. For this full chip level, complete full chip level will take the GDS and that GDS is given to foundry. The foundry will fabricate the ice. Okay. This is a steps in physical design. So in our curriculum, we will do all these steps. So we'll start from block level design. So we'll do all these steps for one block. One block we will do, another block we are going to give to you people to do. So one block you will be. One block. I told you right, one block means it is like a part of full chip level. This is, this is called as one block. Yes, scientific checks, all these things we will discuss. Scientific checks means. The input files what we are getting for physical design, right? That is proper or not? We have to check. So we have checks like check timing, check uh, netlist. So check scan scan depth. So check MV design. Right? We have checks like that. So inputs what we are getting for physical design that is proper or not? We have to check that. That is called a sanity checks. So those are all checks we will do in internally while doing lab. Without those checks, we cannot continue. No, physical verification, this we'll do till routing and we'll do only timing sign up. See this Redoc license we don't have and we will see we will cover the theory part, but this physical verification is not complete part of physical design. So we will do only timing sign up. See, we'll cover theory. This requires separate license, right? Again, Redoc we want. License are very costly. We don't have license for Redux. License is there, we can do. So, which tool we are doing? ICC2, physical design. It is physical design. Okay, ICC2. Yes, ICC2, prime time. Okay. And the physical verification, there is some coding that is not that tool only. Physical verification is nothing but just verifying. See, DRC and LVS here only are verified. Here only are verifying. They will verify one, once again by accurately, like they will invest more time in verifying and fixing the violations. Physical verification is small role. 
means they they need a lot more information about layout there is nothing called as more coding you should be having more information about layout what are the layers present inside the layout hmm? Yes, the CDA tools. I told you right. What is CDA tool? IC validator or caliber? See, you you have a short time. here. You have done a short here. The tool is telling that you have a short time. So physical verification team also rerouted fixing a short. Or they will tell that here there is a short fix it. They will try to PD team. PD team has to do it to reroute. So, what is the basic design and physical design? See, there is nothing for the ASIC design. Right? ASIC design flow continues to be complete this pattern. From top to bottom, is called as ASIC design. So, physical design means you are involved in floor plan, doing all these things till routing. Physical design is nothing but you take the this block, this block you take, this you verify it. That is called as physical verification. STA STA engineer again is a separate engineer. Physical design engineer is separate. STA engineer is in, in, a, in an industry point I'm telling. STA engineer is separate engineer. Physical verification engineer is separate. Product and IR drop engineer is separate. But it all comes under only physical design. Oh, yes, not physical design, back end flow. All comes under back end flow. After synthesis. Yeah, so we are doing a particular STA That task would be get done by STA engineer or after task engineer. So, see, here we will learn complete STA totally. What is STA? So, you can even apply for STA engineer also. Okay, what is the, uh, see, industry like industry will have multiple projects to be done. It is not like they will take three to four months completely to understand and do it. Parallelly has to be run many things. So, they will not assign only one task to everyone, right? They will assign one for PD engineers who will be doing, he will be dumping the reports. He will giving their, this reports to you. He will be analyzing any changes. You will communicate him to him. He will implement those changes. He will come, come back to you. So, STA engineer and PD engineer, they will communicate each other and they will fix the violations. So, you will be telling, you will be seeing the violations in prime time. He will be seeing the violations in ICQ. So, both may be the same person can work in both Yes, see, see, same person can work in both the things if he has a skill. If you work as PD engineer for two years in industry, then you will lose the skill of what? STI engineers. But you should be knowing the concept of STI. Without STI, you cannot do physical design. We can move STI. After doing this course, you can move as STI engineer and PD engineer for sure. STI and PD for sure. Power and IR drop, we don't have tool. We will discuss the theory part. So which tool is parallel to get out? No, I think I am not. Cadence, cadence has some of the, uh, no, no, Voltus, cadence has Voltus tool, yeah, Radak is from Kinophis. So here we do sign, timing sign off, in, sign, in the sign off checks we do timing sign off, so physical verification and power and IR drop we discuss theory. Because we don't have license for that. But how how do you get the engineer? See, see, physical design will stop here only, right? Any industry, physical design engineer is totally different. IR drop engineer is totally different. Physical design, who is working in industry, he will, he will not be having he will not be knowing what are the inputs in IR drop also. But still we are covering I'm telling you that still we are covering red tag. That engineer only is that totally different in industry. I am telling only theory for power and IR drop. How the steps are done? I am telling physical design we cover totally lab, right? Total physical design from here to here. How? Voice is very low. Industry standards, so you need to problem. Yes, yes. See, there are again two points. One is you are entering to industry as a fresher, or you are if you want to enter enter the industry as an experienced man. See, fresher they expect only you should be knowing basics of all these things. 
and they internally they train for one or two months and they'll put you on the process for, for the person who is expecting the experience right you should be knowing these concepts in depth and you should they'll directly put you on the project there you should be in a caliber you should be having that caliber or confidence of working on the project that is the main difference that's it pressure you should industry experts only if you know the basics that is sufficient so for a experienced candidate you should more than not see no knowing this is 100 percent required more than this you should be telling what projects you are done if you, if you are claiming experience what projects you are done see you tell that i have two years experience then what are the previous projects immediately they ask if you are good then you can easily enter into an industry so which industry competing see physical design see in vlsi the industry works in two category there are something called as product based industries product based industries are intel qualcomm samsung amd uh, right and sorry not samsung right intel nvidia. qualcomm nvidia uh, amd synopsis all these are product based they are they will design the ic and they will send the design to the fabrication so they, those are called as product based companies below product based companies all these product based companies projects are not worked by their engineers all these projects will be outsourced to some other companies so those companies are called as service based companies so service based companies will take the candidates and when you enter to service based companies you will be working to the projects of product based companies so service based companies and product based companies both will take you so service based companies are bit silica smart soc cendra uh, mirfra right? chip on time See, we are not supporting like whenever any company needs a like uh, they want any candidate, right? Then immediately mail to us. We have requirement for physical design. So we will do internal screening here. We'll do one mock test here. If they are doing good, we'll forward the resume to them. So many companies, I cannot name the companies, I, because many companies, whenever they want, they have a requirement, they will contact to the, all the institutes, they will contact to all the institutes, because they are not in a position to train the students from the, from the scratch. They will contact to all the institutes, and similarly, they will also contact the VLSA guru. So our placement team will get the mail. So according to the mail, we will forward the candidates. So all the companies, all the service-based companies are included in this. Part-based companies, we... See, Product based companies, they not directly recruit the freshers. They recruit main, major product based companies. They will recruit at least two years experience candidate. So few two years experience candidates are already there in product based companies. Like NVIDIA, AMD. We have few students even in. So product based companies, generally they not directly recruit from freshers. Yeah, product based companies, are you helping uh, to get basic product based companies? See, so if you are claiming two years experience, then you can go to product based companies. Then how do you claim two years experience? You tell me. Okay, if I ask like what project you have done earlier, then how do you answer that? Your salary matters. How do you how how, how do you getting the salary? Please, okay, I we will help you like whatever uh, concept, whatever company we want to work. If they ask bank statement, bank statement, how do you give the bank statement? You should be getting the salary right for two years. How do you give the bank statement? It depends upon that, all those things. What is the company asking to you? What are the information, what are the documents they are asking? It depends on that. You claim two years experience and you go, and the one of the company asks, so give me your three or four months bank statement. No, no, why are you asking? Actually, currently I'm working for this company. Then, then you can easily go. Okay, you are uh, standard school design engineer, you are involved in uh, uh, critical dot labor. Basic cost okay, okay. Yes, which company? Okay, see, see, this experience may help you. Uh, so, but I want to go ultimately need a design or That's why I want no, no, see, that, that is fine. That, see, I cannot tell that as a, as a uh, two years experience, you can go to this company itself. I cannot tell that because we should know what is a company's requirement. What is a company's, what company documents they are asking? Based on that, we can suggest which company it is. Even that you can discuss with the placement team. I am the trainer. I am not sure about that. 
No, no. See, I am not involved in that. I am a trainer. Uh, that our team will take care. Okay, we can talk to the team. Today, Sunday, I think most of them are not there. Or you can directly contact the owner also. You can talk to them. Um, so, off the record, I can tell that, right? This conference will now be recorded. We are having course for advance. So, basic course includes 2 to 2.5 months. So advanced course is to 3 to 3.5 months. It is I am using 3 to 3.5 because the duration is only three months. I am using 3 to 3.5. Some other 15 days may get extended due to some holidays in between, right? Like that. It is 3 to 3.5 months. In basic course, what is covered, right? In the basic course, digital is covered. And Linux is covered. Unix operating Unix. Unix. Unix means see wherever we use EDA tools, right? That we use in EDA operating system. See Unix commands us greater flexibility. Like I, if I want to create ten folders, I can create easily in Unix. Right? So we will teach all the Unix commands. Next we will teach TCL tool command language, and we will teach CMOS basics of CMOS. And PD basics, like PD basics like uh, what are input files, what is synthesis, PD basics. So all these things we cover in what basics. So advance is 3 to 3.5 months. So in advance, we will cover all these topics. So totally advanced physical design. See here, advanced works. See, basics is done all the days, all the weekdays. It is done all the weekdays. Only one day will be a holiday. It is done all the weekdays. Monday to Sunday, it is done, but one day will be holiday, it will be like Friday or on Sunday. Any one day will be the holiday, like it is a week off for the students. Other remaining days, the course will go on right? for basics. For advanced part, right? Advanced parts, we can tell that weekdays lab will be having a lab for weekdays. Lab means a project. We'll start physical design project in the weekdays. Right? This goes on from Monday to Friday. So weekend, not Monday to Friday. I'm very sorry. It is Monday to Thursday. Monday to Thursday. So weekend we have. So weekend is weekend means Saturday and Sunday we have only theory. Saturday and Sunday. If there are any students who can attend only on weekend, some students can attend on weekdays for some other reasons. Then for them the lab will be happening only on only for them if they request right, we will do the lab only on weekend. Saturday and Sunday only this lab is different. And this lab is different. This only for the student who cannot attend on what? With this. For them, separate lab will happen on Saturday and Sunday. So, theory is also Saturday and Sunday. Morning theory, afternoon what? Lab. It's only for the, for the weekday students. They have only what? Theory at the weekend. So, this is how the advanced course is going to work. In the lab, what we'll do? We'll start doing the project. The theory will be done. Parallel, we'll do the project. For example, theory, they will cover floor plan and port placement. In the lab, what we will do? We will do it in the lab. How to create the diarrhea core area, 
how to do the port placement that we'll do in the lab by using tool ic2 tool so this is how our course works so basis is around 2 to 3.5 months total course duration is 5 to 6 months so timings uh, the admin will inform it will be in the morning only uh, hello sir yes the the course will go on in two modes offline and online uh, mode like how uh, it's happening now right yes just give me one second both the course happens in both the modes offline and online mode how it is happening now students are attending online and even students are attending offline i'm in the institute you can attend offline or online both online means through go to meeting you can enter online yes tell me uh, hello sir uh, i'm from mechanical background sir currently i'm working as a mechanical engineer so i'm planning to switch my career to pd engineer so do you think this course is suitable for me because i have no electronics background see if you if you start from the scratch right digital basics you can cope up but uh, see how the industry considers right that is very uh, see some industry will also consider see service based companies we have i told you right there is service based companies uh, i'll tell yeah. you off the record how the service based companies work only this conference is, will now be recorded this thing is so we will give the recorded videos not previous recorded videos the live session recorded videos this running currently running recorded videos will give right every student will get the recorded videos live live session recorded videos this recorded videos will be there for 10 to 15 days right? so if i give the recorded video of today's session tomorrow 21st session i give tomorrow 22nd wins that video will be there for you for next 15 days so every day you will get the recorded videos of previous session so there you can follow and at some times right if there are more weekend students they will conduct even weekend sessions also so you can just contact the admin regarding this is there any chance of attending weekend you can post and in your how, how many projects we will be doing in this course two projects two projects one you will do with help of a mentor right day by day that three months so one more you can do it by your own okay see but actually one more project no students are doing because they are only involved in getting the interview right okay. meanwhile they'll get the interview call they'll go to other other companies so one more project generally though no one are doing it because as soon as we complete the things right they'll prepare for mock interviews so they after preparing for mock interview they'll get a call from the in industry and they'll go out they'll join the company and they'll start doing the company's project I am telling that students are not doing it. Right? I am not telling that we are not giving it. See, today there is one batch ended. So I have told mock interview next week. This one week they will invest in preparing for interview, mock interview that will conduct in internal screening. So once they clear the mock interview, right, we will give them the placement opportunity. They will go out. That's it. As a, to work as a physical designer should we know only about the physical design or previous process also we need to know see if you want directly enter to physical design this should be known this basics should be known directly if you want to enter the advanced part if you if you're attending from basics nothing is required right? basics we are going to do there are two things here advanced and basics if you want to enroll for basics directly, you need not to worry. Basics, we will start. If you are not enrolling for basics, you are directly enrolling for advancements. Right? You should be knowing this basics. If you are attending for basics, nothing is required. Okay. Sir? Yes, tell me. Yeah, um, ca can you tell me how many are placed before batch? I, I had a doubt. 
See, I, I, so I told you, right, I am the trainer. I don't have the information. So you please contact the placement team. They will tell you. Yeah, OK, sir. Thank you. You can ask in the phone call or you can contact the team. Yeah, OK, sir. Uh, sir, there is an option of uh, e-learning. So how will be the timing for that one? Like only on weekends or how it is? Say e-learning means whether you're taking, they will give you recorded videos. So you should watch the recorded videos and you have to do by your own. At the weekends, you will be having the lab session. This lab session will be there even for e-learning students. For the advanced part. For basic part, I think there is no e-learning. Like uh, there is no classes. Uh, they will give you the recorded videos for basics. Okay. Both they will give the recorded videos. At the weekends, right, they will clarify the doubts weekend. And for advanced part, weekend lab will be there for even e-learning students. Uh, sure. And uh, like uh, attending the class, this attendance or this will be monitored or how it is? Attending class is up to you, but you have to clear the mock interviews. See, okay. to, to become eligible for placement, right? internal mock interview will do. See, because we should yeah. see that students are ready for placements, right? Right. See, you should be ready for placements. So we will do internal mock interview. If you are good in mock interview, that is the best criteria what we have. See, attendance will monitor. Like if you are not attending, we will get a call from institute that why you are not attending. If you tell that, see, I will attend, I will do my course by seeing recorded videos and I will directly attend the mock interview, we don't have any issues. Yeah, sure. Like uh, that was like, will it affect my end uh, result? No, like, see, at, least we, at last we want the quality of a student, right, the placement. You attend the sessions yes, or not, we, it is not, uh, we want quality. See, if you go through the videos and if you prepare, see, because many students who enroll here are working, working professionals also. So the faculties of some colleges, right? the working professionals like of other companies who enroll, they don't get the time in attending sessions in the morning time. Right? No issues. See, they are capable of learning very fast. That is okay. Sure, sir. And uh, like uh, as per experience you were mentioned, like is it related to only this domain or any other IT domain? That See, any other domain. Any, any other domain. See, the yeah. institute can give the experience if you are very good. But you should talk about that to institute. Right? You just talk how it works. Okay. Sure, sir. agree. Sir. Yeah. What they have given earlier. Uh, sir, there is an estimate date like when this new batch will be starting or something. Info on that. See, basics, I think it will start from Tuesday or Wednesday. See, once you are enrolled into the course, right, they will add you into the WhatsApp group. In that group, they will message you. And again, our uh, office team will call you back, like what is your intention, whether you're joining or not. Or you'll get a message from VLSA Guru, right, or from the office, uh, like when it is starting. <laughs> So this basics will start from this basics. We'll start from either Tuesday or Wednesday, probably. Sure, sir. Thank you. Hmm. Yes, see, tomorrow it is like just a overview session, and from Tuesday, digital session will start. Hello? Yes, tell me. Yes, tell me. Sir, basic class also all recorded. You are live, sir. See, every session, both will be live. Recorded means okay. it is a additional option we are giving them it's not that uh, we are not doing live right this live session only we are giving recorded see today i, I created a session right for some reasons you okay. didn't attend this video you'll get tomorrow because you went you you, you were having fever you didn't attend right for some unfortunately right so then you'll get the recorded videos and you can cope up right so recorded videos mean it's not recorded some some other time so the live session recorded videos you will also get after the session so both session, live session will happen through online 
and offline and the recorded videos is also given after the class means after at least four hours we want time to upload after four hours you'll get the recorded video for every student you'll get the previous recorded video Sir, every month also started a new batch also basic hello so five to six hello? weeks not like this that's my question sir i also ask that every month also new batch as basic because next month is my semester exam will conduct that reason i do not attend the tuesday basic class the reason i asked you Okay, also every month start the basic no you, you are having examination now you want to start the course but in between you are having exam then, then later you want to attend that is what your question yes sir yes sir See that then you can pause it right whenever you want you can stop your course you can tell to the institute then you can attend whenever you want so after five to six weeks, one more batch will start with basics. You can enroll for that. Or you can enroll now. See, for example, before examination till TCL is done. Right? You can stop till TCL. In the next batch, you can join with CMOS. What you can do. Okay, sir. Thank you, sir. But you have to in, in, inform to the institute right, that you, you are pausing now, like you are not attending after this date. I attend again after some time, right? You should institute the, you inform to the institute that the institute will accept that. Okay, sir. See, anything, if you communicate to the institute, right, they will surely help you. See, at last, our agenda is students should learn and they should get the job right that is what our agenda anything you please communicate to the institute so institute will help you without any other cost like they will not ask for any other cost right they will help you to the best whatever they can do uh, hello sir uh, to work as a physical designer, should be master the front end also for the job. No, no, physical design engineer, no need to have the even knowledge of very log, no issues. Then you can handle it because, anyhow, <coughs> how to handle net list, we are teaching it, right? We are doing it. No need, <laughs> you should be knowing only these basics. Mm. See, when you become experienced in the industry, right, three years, four years, then at that time, you should be also knowing the front end part also. Because to communicate, see, at that time, you will become a lead, right? When you become a lead of physical design engineer, then you should communicate with the other team also. At that time, you should be knowing front end also. When you become experienced, not, not in depth, like at least what information I can communicate to them, what, what information I can get from them. When you get experience, you should be as for now you need not to know anything to work in industry only these basics are sufficient <coughs> a little bit knowledge of very long right means at least how to write a small code for full adder in very long at least that much little basics you have been knowing even if you're not, not knowing that also is fine not perfect if you want main thing we want is digital TCL and CMOS. This is what we want. Yes, thank you, everyone. Any queries, you please WhatsApp to the Institute. Thank you.